the bloody hell has a little video on cycling got to do with sailing? Well, bear with me because I'm going to explain to you why. A folding bike is probably the most important non-sailing related accessory you could have for your boat. Now, it might seem obvious, cycling is after all, uh, a sharp corner. Ugh. I don't know why it's really noisy today. This isn't working, is it? Right, it's a little bit quieter here. And we've got some boats in the background, so that kind of makes it relevant, doesn't it? So what I was trying to say was is that the first benefit for having a bike on board is, of course, for your health. Now, this might seem pretty bloody obvious, but think about it. When you're sailing, you're getting lots of good exercise in your upper body. Maybe you're grinding at the winch, pulling in those sheets, moving around the deck. Core stability, is that a thing? I don't know, I'm just making it up. I'm no health expert, but uh, you're moving around and sort of counter, the, countering the movement of the boat. But one thing you are not getting is aerobic exercise. And I know lots of sailors, myself included, who perhaps could do with that aerobic exercise. They, um, you know, you're, you're not getting any of that kind of exercise at all. I'm just negotiating a tricky. Sometimes I find that I'm, my body is actually really desperate for that, uh, that aerobic exercise, you know? It's spent so long on the boat. God, there's lots of glass here. I'm gonna burst my tires if I'm not careful. Don't underestimate how little aerobic exercise you get on the boat, unless you make a point of doing things outside of sailing. Uh, whether it's swimming, uh, walking, and of course, cycling. Tra la la! Just hit a wing mirror. Another reason for getting a bike is, of course, the ability to explore places. One of the things I like about a bike is that it's like a, somewhere in middle ground between walking and uh, driving, and it means that uh, you can cover kilometres and kilometres, and it's just a great way to, to explore. What I love doing, especially in these kind of places, in towns, do a bit of urban cycling, which basically means... <sighs> yeah, and some towns are pretty uh, conducive to cycling, like uh, Kota Kinabalu, which is where this is being filmed. Uh, lots of wide walkways, promenades like that. And they even have cycle lanes here as well. So it's a very good way of covering a lot of distance very quickly. Uh, which also leads me on to my next point, is that it's a good way of doing shopping. See, I mentioned shopping, didn't I? Look, I'm in the, uh, the market. This is the big vegetable market in KK. Uh, I've got my backpack on so I can load up with lots of lovely fruits and vegetables. And as you can see, it's quite easy to just cruise around here. Uh, actually, when it gets packed, it's impossible to cruise around here. But uh, the early birds have set their stalls up. Quick cycle ride from the marina. Bob's your uncle. Hey presto, Fanny's your aunt. Tra la la. You could, of course, just carry a backpack can get a bit hot and sweaty when you're cycling around. Uh, our friends Mark and Kim have put panniers on the back of their bikes. In fact, Mark has even adapted an old plastic box, or a new plastic box, which he's put on the back of his pannier holder. So he can now go around and uh, pick up engine parts and put it on the back of his bike. Doesn't have to pay for taxis, and it means that he can actually cycle to these locations very quickly. Now obviously with a folding bike, you're compromising on wheel size. These are 20 inch wheels. You can get much smaller folding bikes with uh, wheels the size of your fist. Now you've got to be doing a, a lot of cycling to get anywhere on those things, but you know, they're very convenient. They fold up to nothing. Uh, but these are a good compromise. This particular bike, I always think cycles like a, a proper bicycle. You're able to adjust the handlebars and the, uh, the seat post and it's uh, very, very comfortable. But I think uh, a couple of important... Aeroplane! Aeroplane! Well, this is proper urban cycling, isn't it? So folding bikes might be a compromise, but they have a lot of benefits as well. So I thought I'd just quickly show you my setup which is quite generic actually. It's the kind of thing you could expect from, he's now spoiling it, isn't he? Because he's making lots of noise. Can you hear that? You probably can. So I should probably stop talking now. Bye. So it's a Rally Yugo. Picked it up in Malaysia. Here she is. Isn't she a beauty, hey? Most of the components are basic Shimano. So the gear set, 
and the brakes, they're all Shimano. On a normal folding bike, you have plastic pedals and they fold by pulling like this, squeezing together and lifting up. One of the problems with plastic pedals is that because they're folding, they have a weak spot and they can snap. And I've got through a couple. So I picked up these. Now these I think are wonderful. So they have a little plastic circlip here, which you literally just pop off. And then all you do is you pull this collar back and that's it, it pops out, the whole thing. As you can see, it's made of metal, so it's nice and solid. It's very strong. And you've got those lovely rat trap uh, grips there for your feet. Now I mentioned briefly generic parts like Shimano. Uh, it's just worth talking about Bromptons. Now Bromptons, as you probably know, are perhaps the best folding bike that you can get. They fold up to the size of a 50 pence piece. And they're, they're great. They hold their value as well, which is the other thing. Just one problem. Unless you are in a country that sells Brompton parts, when something goes wrong with it, you're pretty much screwed. Uh, we knew a couple who had two Bromptons on board their boat. Um, when it went wrong in Malaysia, uh, he had to wait until he flew back to the UK to get more parts for it. Absolutely essential on the busy streets of Asia, anywhere really, it's one of these. It's a bell of course, very useful. People do respond to that quite well when you ring that. And of course there's the lights as well. So I've got some uh, USB chargeable cat eyes on both the front and back. And I also wear a head torch and I actually even carry an extra torch. The key thing with cycling, especially in Asia, is the same rule as anchoring at night in Asia. You want to be lit up like a Christmas tree. You want everyone to see you. Think about the bike and the components it's made up of. If it's made up of your generic Shimano stuff, you know that you're not going to have a problem anywhere getting it uh, fixed or repaired or replaced. Uh, take, for example, my bike, uh, my trigger gear system broke. And so they put on a, an old school gear shift system on the handlebar, which I actually quite like. It's good fun. It reminds me of my rally grifter. Did I ever own a rally grifter? So the way that this bike works is that it folds uh, in the center here and also on the handlebar. Um, key thing to look out for on the folding mechanism is to make sure you have this additional lock and this thing drops down onto the lever so the lever can't pop open and we have a similar setup on the handlebar. This lever drops forward but we have this plastic collar that slips into place just to prevent that from uh, accidentally falling forwards. When we take the bike apart it's quick release saddle, so we can literally take the whole saddle off. We could also take off the wheels as well, they're quick release, but the problem with this is you'd have to take off the brake blocks in order to get the wheel out. Uh, but it folds up pretty small. The salt water can be a real bitch when it comes to your bike. So what we did was we got some, some bags made up which had a bit of padding in them and an old uh, car safety belt used as two shoulder straps and uh, it's waterproof as well with big thick plastic zips so we're able to fold up the bikes and pop them in there but before you do that it is worth coating all the moving parts uh, with a bit of lanolin just to protect it from that salt water. The cycling isn't just cruising from A to B it's about exploring as long as you have a good sense of direction or you've got google maps on your phone and you know roughly where you're going you know where the sun rises and where the sun sets you're a sailor, your sense of direction should be very good anyway. But it's just nice to be able to just duck down side streets, uh, go down little alleyways, through housing estates. Uh, I was about to say shopping malls, you probably shouldn't do that. But just to have that freedom and, and ability to not only try and get somewhere, but just cruise around, it's a great thing to have. I got you under my skin, yeah. You are a bad, bad man. Care about no one else but you under your skin, yeah, yeah It's just a sad, sad man Don't have no one else what you're trying to prove As you can see, I'm ranting on because my adrenaline, my adrenaline's pumping, and uh, you can see how excited I am to be back on the bike. I can go off and just cruise, get some exercise, and if it's late afternoon, 
I might slip in a beer on the way home. And finally, I suppose I should mention helmets, because if I don't, someone else will. Crash helmets or lids. Yes, used to wear them all the time. Um, but sadly, I sold my crash helmet when I sold my old mountain bike, which is a bit stupid. Uh, so yes, yeah, should you wear a crash helmet? Really, you should, especially if you're cruising around uh, in, well, anywhere. It doesn't have to be in towns, could be in the countryside. Fortunately, all the recording you saw today was pretty much done on cycle lanes, but that doesn't negate the need for a crash helmet. So uh, I would definitely recommend getting one. Do you look stupid in a crash helmet? I think we're past that now, aren't we?